Same thing with Bitcoin. In the early days, we're like, I don't want that. Today, like, huh, I get it. It's a perfect store of value. It's a better form of money. And over time, that uncertainty about the outcome will diminish. And so the question is, are the days of 80% drawdowns over? Well, the first cycle drawdown was 84. Second was 84. This last one was 77. video that we have for you today, Mark Yusko discusses his forecast regarding the adoption curve of cryptocurrency and his ability to reach in order to demonstrate to billions of people the significance of establishing a network of reliable sources and remaining up to date on the latest tools and technologies. Let's jump right into the video without wasting any time. I mean, so the volatility is here to stay, right? Amazon, 28 years into being a public company, still has very high volatility every single year, right? Including this year, it's had a double digit drawdown and that happens, mm -hmm. right? Every single year on average, you lose 31% of your money in Amazon, but the stock just keeps going up over the long term. So the volatility is going to be here. Now, the question of, is it going to stay 80, 80, which is coincidentally the number that, that Amazon volatility is, or is it gonna slowly trend down as more money comes in? That's just the law of large numbers, right? If exactly. I have a small dollar value, like I have a hundred dollars and I put in another couple hundred dollars, the volatility is gonna get really high. If I have a million dollars and I add a few hundred dollars, there's no volatility at all. So as increasing uh, volumes come in, but the market cap gets bigger, the volatility will shrink but it's never going to be a stable coin, I, I don't believe, because volatility is an indication of uncertainty or disagreement about the future. So if you yeah. think about a bond, right, we all know a bond is a contractual claim. And if you, you know, lend to somebody who's credit worthy, they have to pay you back. So there's not a lot of volatility in bonds. Now, if interest rates rise a lot, there could be short term volatility. But at the end of the day, you hold a treasury bond to maturity, the government's going to pay you. They'll just print money to pay you. So the volatility of bonds is very low because the uncertainty is low. In equities, there's more volatility because we don't know. Right? When Amazon started, people thought, that's a dumb idea. I don't want to buy stuff on the Internet. I don't want to put my credit card on the Internet. Today, you do it without even thinking about it. Same thing with Bitcoin. In the early days, be like, I don't want that. Today, like, huh, I get it. It's a perfect store of value. It's a better form of money. And over time, that uncertainty about the outcome will diminish. And so the question is, are the days of 80% drawdowns over? Well, the first cycle drawdown was 84. Second was 84. This last one was 77. I think this next one likely is a little bit less. Why? Well, because I think the upside of this cycle will be less too. If you go back to each of the previous halving cycles, we had these big run-ups, went to 2.3, 2.4 times the fair value. Well, why would anything trade above fair value? Well, humans are going to human. Humans Mostly they can't do math to our, to our conversation earlier, but then secondly, <laughs> they FOMO, right? They, they, they see something moving and they got to get in. So the price goes up above fair value. Right. But then what happens is leverage comes in and the gamblers and the speculators come in and that pushes the price way above fair value. But at some point, gravity takes over and you head back toward fair value 
and you usually crash right through. And then you get to a washed out, really undervalued because you got margin calls and you got the unraveling. Bitcoin stabilized around $69,500 on April 10th, two days after, after almost reaching its record high of $73,500 with less than 10 days left before the Bitcoin having will the previous all time high price support level hold this marks Bitcoin's third failed attempt to jump decisively below its all time high reflecting traders uncertainty near record levels where profit taking or increased selling pressure prevents further upward movement. There is a greater likelihood that Bitcoin's price may experience significant drops in the coming weeks as a result of its consecutive rejections on the upside. Arthur Hayes, co-founder of BitMEX, forecasts that a fire sale of crypto assets will be triggered by the combination of the strategies adopted by the United States Federal Reserve and the Treasury Department, as well as the fact that Bitcoin will be used in April. During the second half of April, Hayes brought attention to the fact that volatile assets could be exposed to considerable risks, an interval that is characterized by a reduction in liquidity as a result of the payment of taxes by the United States government, the beginning of quantitative tightening by the Federal Reserve, and the impending utilization of the Treasury's general account. According to his argument, the period of time between April 15th and May 1st is the most precarious for risky assets. He added that this is the time when tax payments remove liquidity from the system. QT continues to rumble on at the current elevated pace, and Yellen has not yet begun running down the TJ. After May 1st, the pace of KT declines, and Yellen becomes busy cashing checks in order to drive up asset prices. Is the halvings going to occur? The fair mm -hmm. value is going to increase because that's yep. what happens when the halving occurs. The fair value goes up because the price needs to adjust to support the miners. Now, in this cycle, the fair value probably doesn't go up as much as previous cycles because we have this ha this pre-having event of the ETF, which boosted the price closer to fair value so that most of the miners are, are doing OK right now. But but the, the fair value is probably going to go up to call it, you know, 75 ish K would be my estimate. In a normal cycle, then the leverage comes in and it pushes that to 2.3, 2.4 times. Well, there's not as much leverage now because, you know, they got rid of CZ at Binance. So that's not as much leverage. And they got rid of some of the old bad actors in terms of the leveraged lenders. So let's say we only go up two times fair value this time. So we go to 150 ish. Okay. Well, then what happens? Well, then when you're so far above fair value, that's when the short sellers are come in and 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 some of the people will say, OK, that's good enough for me. I'll take a little profit. And then we start to go down. So how far down do we go this time? To your point, if. If somebody bought in today at, you know, 68, 69, whatever, and it's 150. They might not sell right away. Then, yeah, they won't. Yeah. You and I both know there are a whole bunch of people who are like, I'm going to wait for a pullback. And then it's going to go up some more. And they're going to be, I'm going to wait for a pullback. And then it's going to go up some more. And when it gets to 110, they're going to be like, okay, I'm in. Well, then if it goes to 150, they're like, oh, this is awesome. Then it but as it back. starts to roll over in the next bear market, which I think happens, you know, at the end of 25, Yes, that's then I, what I would love to know why you think into 25 because I have 25 as well. Yeah, well, as, it, as again, a, the four year cycle, the four year cycle, oh, okay, I believe is baked in because it's hard coded around the having, and the having creates this impetus for price to rise. People FOMO in, and we get above fair value. Inevitably, an asset either stays at f above fair value and grows into it. Now, now that's certainly possible. You know, you look at like Nvidia. Is Nvidia going to stay at a crazy ridiculous price and is the value going to grow into it or is it going to crash down so. back to I fair value like Cisco did, like Microsoft did, like Intel did. You know, here's the crazy thing. In 2000, Intel went up 20 fold over about 18 months, 20 times, just like NVIDIA, right? Everybody said their chip's gonna change the world, it's gonna be great. Today, 
24 years later, it's down like 60%. Because what happened? NVIDIA happened. So is there another company oh, AM, AMD. that come in and AMD really, NVIDIA? Yeah. Probably. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. Right. Not today, but, but probably. Yeah. So my only point there is I don't think the cyclicality is gone. I don't okay. think this is number go up in a straight line. I think we're going to have peaks and we're going to have troughs. And for a while, we're going to make higher highs and higher lows. That's called accumulation, right? Mm -hmm. So there's going to be an accumulation over the next year or so. Then when it gets too highly priced, there'll be distribution. The smart money, the people who bought early or some of the whales will start to distribute to the masses. And then when it falls, they buy back. But here's the, here's the, the part that, that I don't love. So we have this, this Bitcoin market that is the spot market and yeah. these ETFs that are based on spot really good. The problem is the futures market got bigger, meaning there are now more places like the CME and the CBOE and all this stuff where futures are available. Now, what does a future allow you to do? It allows you to create something out of thin air and sell it. So in the old days, oil, natural gas, any commodity, gold. In the olden, olden days, if I had oil and I wanted to sell it to you, I had to have the oil, right? I had to be able right. to go get the oil, put it in a barrel, send it to you and settle up. And then the futures came along and said, no, no, no. You can just write a contract that I'll sell you a paper barrel of oil. And then I could pretend that I'm going to go get a barrel of oil. But as long as we settle up the contract before I need to get the Roll barrel, over. No, yeah. no problem. Mm -hmm. So that allows people to naked short. And if you look at you know gold prices for years have been artificially suppressed because I the swear. big players can sell naked in Mark, the market. There is a difference among consumers regarding the future of Bitcoin. According to a study conducted by Deutsche Bank, one third of respondents think that the value of Bitcoin will go below $20,000 by the end of 2024, which would be a significant decrease of $50,000 to CL from its present price, echoing the lows of a 2022 crash. In the market, only 10% of the 3,600 participants anticipated that their Bitcoin holdings would reach $75,000 by the end of December. Meanwhile, 40% of the participants are positive about the long-term prospects of Bitcoin, while roughly the same number of 38% anticipate that it will perish. UK Capital, a market analyst for cryptocurrency, forecasts that Bitcoin will drop to approximately $40,000 following the housing, noting the fact that its price has moved around the past three housings, particularly. The following graphic presents a comparison of the differences and similarities in the pricing patterns around housing in the years 2020 and 2024. The circle area that is highlighted in blue in the associated chart is significant because it aligns with the region where Bitcoin has historically experienced a retracement of approximately 20 to 40 percent before it is experiencing events. For example, in 2024, the price of Bitcoin has pulled back by approximately 18 percent, bringing it closer to its correction of approximately 20 percent that occurred prior to the housing market in 2020. This still leaves it with more room to decline in advance of the 2024 housing market, which is less than 10 days away.